Hello, good day. Um, my name is David Archer and the name of this topic is Why do bad things happen to good people? Uh, thanks again for watching this video and paying attention to this topic based on the Bible. And thanks for tuning in and uh, I hope everyone has a great day and all with all God blessings. Yeah, so why do bad things happen to good people? Is God to blame? Bad karma? Is there a way to escape suffering and evil? Bad things abound. There are God table for harm. Now, Samantha, a 35 year old woman in Dhaka, Bangladesh, has the reputation of being a loving and caring person. People knew her as a hard working and happy young wife who wanted to help. Others know what she had learned about God. How shocked her family and friends were when Samantha suddenly contracted an illnesses that claimed her life in less than a week. James and his wife, a young couple in their 30s, had a reputation similar to that of Samantha. One springtime, they went to visit their friends on the west coast of the United States. They never returned to their home in New York. While away, they were involved in a fatal automobile accident, leaving a tremendous void in the lives of their loved ones and co-workers. You do not have to look far to see that evil and suffering abound today. Wars kill civilians as well as soldiers. Crime and violence victimize innocent people. Deadly accidents and crippling illnesses occur irrespective of a person's age or status in life. Natural disasters wipe out communities indiscriminately. Prejudice and injustice are widespread. Perhaps you have re personally suffered as a victim. It is only natural to ask questions like these. Why do bad things happen to good people? And is God to blame for such things? Are calamities random occurrences or are they man-made? Could it be karma? Is that is the results of one's action in a past life that caused person suffering? Is there, if there is an almighty God, why does he not protect good people from harm? And will life ever be free of evil and suffering? To answer these questions, we need to understand the answer to these two basic questions. Why do bad things happen at all? And what will God do? Bad things happen to good people. Why? Since Jehovah God is the creator of all things, and he and his almighty, many people may be inclined to hold him responsible for everything that takes place in the world, including all that is bad. However, consider what the Bible says about the true God. Jehovah is righteous in all his ways, says Psalms 145, 17. All his God's ways are justice, a God of faithfulness, who is never unjust. Righteous and upright is he, Deuteronomy 32.4. Job is very tender and affectionate and merciful, James 5.11. God does not cause bad things to happen, does he? Though incite others to, to commit crime, vile deeds? Not at all. When on the trial states the scriptures, let no one say, I am being tried by God. Because, why? Because with evil things, God cannot be tried, nor does he himself try anyone, James 1.30. God does not try or test anyone by inciting him to behave badly. God neither causes bad things to happen nor incite others to do what is bad. Who or what then is to blame when bad things happen? Being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Identifying one reason 
Why humans suffer, the Bible says, time and unexpected events overtake them all. Ecclesiastes 9.11 I have seen some easy classics, 9 11 states. I've seen something forward under the sun that the swift do not always win the race, nor do the mighty win the battle, nor do the wise always have the food, nor do the intelligent always have the riches, nor do those with knowledge always have success, because time and unexpected events overtake them all. Now, when when unanticipated events or accidents happen, whether someone is affected or not depends on a large extent on where he is at the time as they occur. Nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ spoke of a calamity involving eight people who were killed when a tower fell on them, Luke 13, 5. They did not become victims because of the way they had lived their lives. They were simply under the tower when it happened to fall. More recently, a devastating earthquake shook Haiti in January of 2010. The Haitian government says that over 300,000 lives were lost. All those lives were claimed without regard for who the individuals were. Illnesses too can strike anyone at any time. Some might ask, could not God prevent such deadly calamities from happening? Could he not shield the good people from the calamity? For God to intervene in such a way, it would mean that he knows about bad things before they happen. Why God certainly has the ability to foreknow the future? The question we need to consider is, does God choose to exercise to a limitless intent, extent his power the four know such things, Isaiah 42, 49. And Isaiah 42, 49 says, See, the first things have come to pass. Now I'm declaring new things. Before they spring up, I tell you about them. The scripture says, God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Psalms 115, 3. Jehovah does what he deems necessary to do. Not everything he is capable, not everything he's capable of doing. That applies to what he decided to foresee. For example, after wickedness became prevalent in the ancient cities of Sodom or Gomorrah, God told the patriarch Abraham, I will go down to see whether they are acting according to the old cry that has reached me. If not, I can go, I can get to know it. Genesis 18, 20, 21. For a time, Jehovah chose not to know the extent of the wickedness in those cities. Similar reason, Jehovah can choose not to foreknow everything. Genesis 22, 12. In no way is this an indication of imperfection or weaknesses on his part. Since perfect is his activity, God balances his ability to foreknow the future with his purpose. He never forces humans to follow a certain course. Deuteronomy 30, 2 4 says, The rock, perfect is his activity, for all his ways are justice. A God of right a God of faithfulness who is never unjust, righteous and upright is he. What then may we conclude? Simply this God's exercise of foreknowledge is selective and discretionary. Why does God not protect good people from crime? Are humans responsible? Part of the blame for wickedness lies with humans. Notice how the Bible describes a process that can lead to harmful acts. Each one is tried by being drawn out and enticed by his own desires. As in the desire, when it has become fertile, give birth to sin. In total sin, when it being carried out brings forth death. James 1 14 15. When individuals act on improper desires to give in to wrong cravings, they are bound to suffer bad consequences. Romans 7 21 
23 says, I find then this law in my case. When I wish to do what is right, what is bad is present with me. I really delight in the law of God according to the man I am within. But I see in my body another law, warring against the law of my mind, leading me captive to sin's law that is in my body. As history show, humans have committed horrendous acts and caused immense sufferings. Moreover, wicked men can influence others to become corrupt or just penetrate in badness. Proverbs 1, 10 to 16 states, My son, if sinners try to entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us set an ambush to shed blood. We will lie hidden, waiting for innocent victims without cause. We will swallow up them alive as a grave does. Whole like those going down to the pit. Let us seize all the precious treasures, and we will fill our house with spoil. You should, you should join us, and we will all share equally what we steal. My son, do not follow them. Keep your feet off the path, for their feet run to do evil, and they hurry to shed blood. blood. Now, humans have committed horrendous acts and caused immense suffering. Should God intervene and prevent people from doing bad things? Consider how man is, man is made. The scriptures say that God created man in God's own image, that is, in God's likeness. As us, humans have the ability to, to reflect God's quality. Genesis 1.26 Humans have been given the gift of free will and can choose to love God and stick to Him by doing what is right in His eyes. Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20. If God coerced people into following a certain course, would He not be notifying the gift of free will? Why? Humans will be reduced to nothing more than machines doing exactly what they are programmed to do. The same will be true if fate or kishmet dictate what we do. And everything what happened to us, how glad we can be that God dignified us by allowing us to choose our own course. This doesn't mean though that the, the harm caused by human error and bad choices will forever plague mankind. Is karma a cause of suffering? If you were to ask someone from a Hindu or a Buddhist background the question posed on the cover of, the, of this magazine, you will likely hear the answer, bad things happen to good people because of the law of karma. They are reaping the footage of what they did in previous lives. Regarding the teaching of karma, it is helpful to know that the Bible says what the Bible says about death. In the Garden of Eden where humankind originated, the Creator said to the forest man Adam, From every tree of the garden you may eat to satisfaction, but as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it. For in the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. Genesis 16 17. 17. If Adam had sinned by disobeying God, he will have, if Adam, Adam sorry, had not sinned by disobeying God, he will have lived forever. Death came about as a penalty. For disobedience to God's command. Then, when children were born, death spread to all men, Romans 5.12. But thus, it can be said that the wages of sin pays is death, Romans 6.23. The Bible also explains the one who has died has been acquitted from his sin, Romans 6.7. In other words, people do not keep paying for their sins after death. Now, millions of people today explain that the problem of human suffering involves karma. A believer usually accepts his own suffering as well as that of others without getting too disturbed by it. But the fact remains that the concept holds out no hope of stopping bad things from happening. It is believed that the only relief offered to an individual is liberation from the cycles of reward to social, social acceptable behavior and special knowledge. These ideas, of course, are far different from what the Bible says. The primary cause. The primary cause of wickedness, though, 
is not man. Satan, the devil, originally a faithful angel of God, did not stand fast in the truth and brought sin into the world. John 8.44 He instigated a rebellion in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3, 1 to 5. And Jesus Christ called him the wicked one and the ruler of the world, Matthew 6, 13, and John 14, 30. John 14, 30 says, I will not speak too much more, for it was Jesus speaking, for the ruler of the world is coming. And Matthew 6, 13 says, do not Bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the wicked one. Mankind in general follows Satan by heeding his origins to ignore the good ways of Jehovah. 1 John 2, 15 and 16 states, Do not love either the world or the things of the world. And if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because everything in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes and the showy display of one's means of life doesn't originate with the Father, but originates with the world. Mankind, now, the, now 1 John 5, 19 says, we know we originate with God, but the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, which is Satan, the devil. There are other spirit creatures who have turned wicked and have joined Satan. The Bible in the case of Satan is demons as mislead are misleading the entire inhabited earth, causing woe from Revelation 12, 9 and 12. As us, the principal blame for wickedness has to be placed on Satan the devil. Clearly, God is not responsible for bad things that happen to people, nor does he make them suffer. On the contrary, he has promised to eliminate badness as the following article we show. Thank you very much for watching and uh, let you see beneficial and, uh, and informative and, uh, and they see that the real reason for evil and suffering on the, on the earth is in Satan the devil for all the wickedness and the, the earth is being on the sin and they see the reason for all the calamities and things. They have nothing to do with God because good people and bad people suffer in you know, earthquakes, floods, fires and so on and so on. So, thank you once again for watching, and the, the next topic on this particular subject is a topic. What God will do about badness? We will see how what God will do soon about all the bikeness and badness and stop all this crime and all these things will soon come to an end. We will look at that in the Bible in the next topic. God bless.